First, I would like to appreciate all the feedbacks that I'm receiving from you, from my fellows, all around the world. It is really helpful and it can enlighten my path through this journey. In fact, in this journey, I'm gonna explain the concepts of animal nutrition in an intuitive language uh, to be understandable for everybody. So in my previous videos, I talked about different targets in feed formulation, and also I introduced two methods, uh, least cost feed formulation and maximum profit feed formulation, where we accounted for variability in ingredient prices and uh, product price. It means that we accounted for variability in market. So another variability that uh, can come to clay is variability in nutrient levels of feed ingredients. For example, let's say uh, I'm gonna use a soybean meal in my diet. So the protein level is 44% in soybean meal, but you know, it's an average value. So it can be different from a batch to another batch of soybean meal. For example, let's say in one batch, I can get um, 42%. In another batch, I can get 48% protein. So we can say there is standard deviation or let's say a variability in uh, nutrient composition of every feed ingredient. And we need to take account for that. Otherwise, our confidence in meeting the uh, nutrient requirement of animals will be low. I would say if you are uh, using the mean values of uh, ingredients tables, I mean mean values of uh, nutrients. So your confidence is just 50% in uh, meeting the nutrient requirement of animals. But if you want to increase your confidence, let's say to 70% to 80%. So in that case, you need to use stochastic feed formulation. So stochastic feed formulation, in fact, is a way to account for nutrient variability in feed ingredients and increase the confidence level in formulating the diets. So the stochastic feed formulation is your confidence level. It's a simple defini definition about uh, stochastic feed formulation. And in this video, I'm gonna explain it in details and I'm gonna show you how you can set up an Excel spreadsheet uh, to conduct the um, stochastic method. So let's get started. I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. All right, so in today's video, I just thought it would be better to list all the steps that we're gonna take to formulate the diets. It would be more uh, helpful and easier to get through these steps. So as you can see in this slide, I have categorized the steps of stochastic feed formulation in seven different steps. So if you pay close attention, steps number four, five, and the last step from uh, number seven are uh, bolded. In fact, these three steps 
are inclusively related to stochastic feed formulation. But other steps, they are similar between stochastic feed formulation and least cost feed formulation. And if you want to understand stochastic feed formulation in depth, I would recommend watching my previous video on least cost feed formulation. And by that, you will be ready to get into this uh, feed formulation method. So the first step is ingredient tables. We need to set up an ingredient table. So we want to use uh, which ingredients and what are their nutrient uh, composition. So as you can see in stochastic feed formulation, we want to have the ST or standard deviation values for different nutrients. In this tutorial video, I'm gonna show you uh, how you can include ST values for protein and amino acids. And of course, we can apply this method to other uh, nutrients and minerals or energy, but because the uh, protein is the most expensive part of a diet, so we are focusing mostly on protein and amino acids. Okay, let's fire up an Excel sheet. Okay, to start from scratch, I'm gonna just copy paste the list of ingredients that we used in my previous videos. So I'm gonna just close the previous one. Okay, so I'm gonna just zoom in so you can see my screen better. And here you can see we have different feed ingredients with their um, nutrient composition. And I'm gonna just format them as table. And maybe I can choose this one and my table has um, headers, yes. Okay, so now you can see uh, I have copied uh, the list of ingredients and their nutrient composition. I would recommend watching the least cost feed formulation or maximum profit feed formulation video where I explain them in details, but it's just simple. And we have, for example, corn as an ingredient. We have its cost. Weight should be one for each ingredient because we want to use all of ingredients in our diet. And the sum of weight should be one or 100%. And we have metabolizable energy level of that ingredient, protein level, calcium, phosphorus, sodium, chloride, and amino acids. So what I'm gonna do here is to include standard deviation values for protein and amino acids. So I'm gonna just insert new row for each of the amino acids and also protein. And 
as you can see, I will import the standard deviation or variability of uh, nutrients in these rows and for tryptophan. So as you can see here, what I did was I just imported standard deviation uh, rows for protein and for each of amino acids. And I need to import the values here. So before doing that, I'm just gonna phrase my first row and the first column. Yeah. So now we can easily navigate through the Excel sheet and we will have uh, the nutrient names and also ingredient names wherever we are navigating to. So where should we get standard deviation values? I have a PDF file here. It's table standardized ileal digestibility of amino acids in feedstuffs for poultry. So it's been prepared by Wacheningen Livestock Research. And in fact, it is for poultry, but when you are using standard deviation of amino acids in feed ingredients, it can be applied for all species. This video is not just for poultry. You can use the stochastic feed formulation to formulate diets for fish, for cat and dog, for uh, cattle, everything. So if you look Actually, you can search online and you can get this PDF file. If you look at the values, it is page 54. You can see for each product, for example, for fish meal here is an example. So we do have amino acid patterns and their mean values. And also we do have a standard deviation values here. For example, it says lysine level in fish meal is 7.1% and it can be varied by 1%. It means that in different uh, samples, it was varied between 6.1 to 8.1. It is the meaning of standard deviation. So in fact, you can use these tables and you can uh, export the standard deviation values for each uh, nutrient in each ingredient. What I'm really interested in is just commercialize the research results and get them in, to use in a practical situation. Otherwise, why people bother to uh, do research and publish these results? So our task as animal nutritionist is to use them, is to commercialize them. And that's why I really uh, want you to pay close attention to scientific papers and try to use them in practical situations. All right, let's get back to our spreadsheet. Okay, so previously I 
extracted the standard deviation values for my ingredients just to save time for this video. And I'm just gonna paste them here. So I'm going to copy standard deviation for lysine values and just paste them here. As I said, you can get these values, standard deviation values from the um, PDF that I showed you, or even if you are working for a feed meal, you know, you're gonna analyze the nutrient levels for each batch of feed ingredient that you are receiving in your feed meal. So then you can just calculate, you know, the standard deviation of nutrients and use them in stochastic feed formulation. I'm just trying to not get distracted and import this data correctly. All right. Okay, so now let's have a look at soybean meal. We can see the average value of protein in soybean meal is 44%. But take a look at the standard deviation. Can you believe this? It is 5%. It, mean, it, is, it means that the protein level of soybean meal can be uh, either be lower than 44% or upper than 44%. It means that it can be varied between 39% up to 49%. I would say it's a huge variation. And I really appreciate stochastic method. If we don't want to take account for this variability, what would, what would we end up at the end of the day? we would end up at uncertainty. Lower confidence of meeting nutrient requirement of animals. That's why we really need to improve our methods, improve our approaches in feed formulation. Okay, so I believe I finished step one. Step one was, as you can see, um, setting up ingredient table, including standard deviation values for protein and amino acids. The second step is really easy, ingredient constraint. It means that minimum and maximum. It means that um, What is the restriction for your ingredient? For example, let's say for fish meal, we wanna use it minimum as 0% and maximum as 3%. We can manipulate these values. In some situation, I would increase uh, the inclusion rate of fish meal or other feed stuff. It depends, it depends on 
availability of feed ingredient. It depends on presence of some anti-nutrient or anti-nutritional factors in feed ingredient. And also it depends on its price. So as you can see here, I do have two rows for minimum and maximum values of each ingredient. And the next step is ingredients inclusion rate in the diet or diet formula. And you can see I have specified them in green color here. So I would, I can import any number here for now because it's not the formulated diet. It's not the uh, final diet. And we will ask the software, I mean solver function of Excel to determine the optimum level of each ingredient subjected to constraints that we're gonna uh, set up those constraints in solver dialog box. I will show that later on. Okay, let's move on to next step. Next step is number four, stochastic feed formulation specific step, nutrients, coefficient mod modifier based on nutrients SD or standard deviation. So I have called it nutrient coefficient modifier. You can name it anything you want. It means that we want to account for this variability. To do that, at the first step, we need to multiply nutrient standard deviation by ingredient inclusion rate and then squared it. So let's do that. So I'm going to put it in new rows. So I'm going to write protein number modifier. You can name it whatever you want. So what was the formula? It was a standard deviation of that, that nutrient. It means that standard deviation of protein times, as you can see, I am writing here, the formula, times inclusion rate of that ingredient. I'm gonna close parentheses and I'm gonna square it. So if you, pay attention to this part. I have imported a formula for protein modifier. All right. So in fact, I can drag it to right to copy and paste the formula to other cells as well. For example, for wheat, I have this formula. See, C8, C8 in fact is standard deviation of protein in wheat. In fact, I am multiplying it by C27, cell C27 is inclusion rate of wheat 
in my diet and then to the power of two I am squaring it so I dragged it for other ingredients and you can see the protein modifier row is ready now I am going to do same thing for amino acids. I do have lysine, methionine, methionine cysteine, and threonine and tryptophan. So for lysine, modifier is equals parentheses. standard deviation of lysine in corn times inclusion rate of corn to the power of two and again i'm gonna drag it to other ingredients as well so my next Amino acid is methionine. So I'm going to say methionine modifier. The next one is methionine um, plus cysteine modifier. And the next one is theronine. And the next one is tryptophan. Okay, we are doing the same thing. We don't have any new thing here. So for methionine, I'm just gonna choose methionine standard deviation and multiply it by inclusion rate of ingredient here is corn to the power of two again i can drag it to right for other ingredients as well so here i'm going to insert modifier for methionine plus cysteine and as you can see i am doing the same thing see b18 b18 is standard deviation of methionine plus cysteine times b27 b27 is inclusion rate of corn to the power of two. There we go. Drag it to the right. If you don't drag it to the right, in that case, you need to type down the formula for each ingredient and it takes time. So that's why we just drag them. Okay, for thronin, I do have SD for thronin times inclusion rate of ingredient to the power of two. And I can just copy for other cells and for tryptophan, I am doing same thing. All right, fantastic. Okay, let's move on to next step. Step number five. Step number five is setting up confidence level and standard normalized value. And we will use the function of norm sin we to determine this 
uh, standard normalized value. And we will have a confidence level. If you pay close attention, here is negative of norm synv of confidence level that we're gonna have in our diet formulation. If you want to have 70% confidence in your diet formulation, it means that you will have 70% confidence that nutrient requirements of animal are going to uh, be met by nutrient composition of your ingredients. In that case, you will put 70% here and you will calculate minus norm synv of 70%. So in fact, it's a statistical concept and I would like you uh, understand this concept. So as you can see here, this is a bell-shaped distribution of data and it is symmetrical. It means that uh, this part is symmetrical with the other part and we call it normal distribution. If you pay attention to the average value or mean of this uh, distribution, it is zero and the standard deviation is one. What would you call it? It is a normal distribution with the mean of zero and standard deviation of one. Yes, correct. We call it standard normal distribution. So in fact, if we calculate a, a value on this x-axis of a standard normal distribution curve that shows um, a percentile of data that is less than or equal to this value, we can call it normalized value. So we are using norm simv function to calculate normalized value. Because in our sample, let's say if we conduct a protein analysis for different batches of soybean meal, and we've got different numbers. Let's say 39% protein, 42%, 40%, 48%, 46%, percent whatever. So we have a distribution like this. And we can determine a value that, let's say, 70% of samples are less than or equal to that value, or 80%. I call it percentile. The percentile of the data that are uh, less than or equal than a value. So if we want to standardize it, we need to convert it to standard normal distribution with the mean of zero and standard deviation of one. So in fact, we are converting our actual value to a normalized value on the standard normal distribution curve. I hope you understand this concept. So here, by doing norm synv, in fact, we are uh, calculating that standing standard 
normalized value. So let's get back to our um, spreadsheet and I'm gonna put it probability level or confidence level let's say 69% so I would put 69 0 0.69 or 69% right here what should I do minus norm sim of confidence level come here I'm putting equal and norm sim it popped up norm sim actually I need to put minus norm sim of this probability so please do not forget to put minus sign here here should be minus norm sim of this cell the confidence level that we want to have in meeting nutrient requirements of animal okay i am gonna okay highlight it like this and we will use this in calculation of diet specification so let's move on to next step next step number six is nutrients constraint so I am gonna come here and I'm gonna put nutrient constraints so I will have minimum and maximum value so I'm gonna just merge these two cells to make it better okay so I don't have anything for cost but for weight it should be one I explained this in the previous videos as well when I put one for weight for the target weight it means that our diet should be balanced in one or some of ingredients level should be one or hundred percent okay what about energy I'm gonna formulate diet for Ross 308 broilers in grower period so the energy level is 3100 kilocalorie per kilogram because I have imported the energy level based on megacalorie per kilogram so I need to put the uh, requirements based on megacalorie per kilogram as well so based on the table it was 3.1 um, actually sorry I need to put it in front of the energy my bad so it was the energy level was 
3.1 megacalorie per kilogram. But we want to have a range. That's why I am putting 2.95 as minimum value and 3.1 as maximum value. I have explained this concept in my previous videos as well. Always for nutrient and nutrients and for energy requirement, we have a range. We do not have a fixed value. So, for example, for broilers, the range for uh, energy level is from 2.7 to 3.1 or 3.2 megacalorie energy per kilogram of diet. Here, I just choose 2.95 megacalorie per kilogram as a minimum value. What about the protein level? So the protein level is 21.5. 21 I'm gonna just insert 21 because I have um, reduce the energy level, so just I put 21 here. Should I put any requirement or any nutrient constraints for SD, standard deviation? No. So I'm moving to calcium. The calcium level in their diet should be 0 0.87 as minimum value. So for sodium and chloride, I just put 0 0.16 because the requirement for sodium and chloride is between 0 0.16 to 0.23%. I just chose the minimum value because I believe some sodium and chloride will come from the drinking water as well. That's why I would like my diet to have a minimum level of uh, required sodium and chloride. So the next nutrient is lysine. What's the lysine requirement? Total lysine requirement is 1.29, 1.29%. Okay, the next one is methionine. Methionine is 0.51. The next one is methionine plus cysteine. It is 0 0.99. The next amino acid is theronine. So theronine is 0 0.88. The next one and the last one, <laughs> hopefully, is tryptophan. So tryptophan level is 0 0.21. There we go. 0 0.21. So I have imported nutrient constraints as well. I'm just going to make it fancy because I like fancy style. Mm, I'm going to choose the gold table. Do you want me to choose gold table? Of course you do. Okay. There we go. And I can delete this column. So, if we look at our steps, 
we finished step number six. Almost we are there. We are going to set up step number seven, diet specification. And then we will set up the solver uh, function dialog box. And then we can formulate our diets. So for diet specification, for nutrients without standard deviation, for example, let's say for energy level, for calcium level, phosphorus level, sodium chloride, that we do not have any standard deviation, we will calculate based on some product of ingredients nutrient times ingredients inclusion rate. But for nutrients with SD, like protein and amino acids, the first part is same as the previous one. I mean, some product of ingredients nutrient times ingredients inclusion rate, but we're gonna add one more thing. Plus, normalize the value. What is normalized value? Here. This one, number, step number five. We got our normalized value from step number five. So, we're gonna times it by square root SQRT function, actually it is square root. Square root of sum of nutrients modifiers. For example, protein modifiers index, amino acids modifiers index that I calculated already. So here I am going to add diet specification. So what is the cost of our diet? I have explained it in my previous videos as well. We need to use some product. Um, I can just type here some product function. There we go. So our first row will be the cost of each ingredient. See from B cell B3 to cell S3. Then I'm gonna put comma and then it should be multiplied by the inclusion rate of ingredients. I'm going to put parentheses and there we go. So in fact, Uh, this cell W3 will show our dietary cost at the end of the day when we formulated the diet. So I'm gonna do same thing for weight and for other nutrients, for those nutrients without uh, standard deviation, right? So if I want to drag it down, you know, uh, these cells, the inclusion rate will be changed. So I'm going to put F, uh, I'm going to put dollar sign to make them a fixed value. See, I didn't change anything in my formula. I just put dollar sign by pressing F4 key on your keyboard for inclusion rate cells. It means that for these cells. From here, 
from uh, B27 until S27. And then by that, I can drag it down without being worried about the changing the other cells. So row five, I don't need this one. It's extra row. Uh, so as you can see, the weight of diet has been calculated here, but it's not the final answer yet. It's uh, when we formulated the diet, it should be one. And for now, the metabolizable energy level of diet is zero. And we need to formulate the diet to see what it will be. So, as you can see here, to calculate the energy level of diet, I just um, multiplied the energy level of each ingredient by their inclusion rate, right? Okay. Now I am going to calculate diet specification for protein. This is the important part because we do have ST or standard deviation for protein. It is where stochastic feed formulation methods comes to play. So again, take a look at this step. It should be some product of ingredients nutrients times ingredients inclusion rate plus normalized value times square root of some of the nutrients modifiers. So I'm gonna show you here what I mean. So what was the first part? Some product of protein level of ingredients, right? I put comma times by inclusion rate of each ingredient. So, so far by this formula, I have dietary protein level. In fact, it is calculating dietary protein level for me, but I'm going to put plus and we need to choose the normalized value. Here is our normalized value. Cell number uh, H36, right? Times SQRT or square root of sum of nutrient modifiers. It means that row number 29, protein mo modifiers. And I'm gonna close parentheses two parentheses, there we go. So in fact, this value here will be representing the protein level of diet corrected for 
standard deviation. It is the simplest way to say that, intuitive way to say that. Okay, what about for calcium? We do not have standard deviation for calcium. So I'm gonna just put some product of calcium, right? Calcium levels in my feed ingredients. They should be multiplied by inclusion rate of each ingredient. Okay. I'm gonna do same for phosphorus and sodium and chloride. But because I want to save time and do not repeat the same formula for other minerals, so I'm coming back to my previous cell to calcium and look at here, I'm gonna select B27 to S27. It means that the inclusion rate of ingredients, right? I'm gonna press F4. It adds dollar sign around the uh, cell number. And also here, I'm gonna put my cursor on S27 and put a four key to put dollar sign. It means that I am making fixed value. It means that if I drag it down, drag the formula down to other cells. So uh, as you can see here in calcium, uh, we multiplied calcium levels of ingredients by inclusion rates of each ingredient. Here in phosphor, we multiplying, we are multiplying phosphorus levels of uh, ingredients by the inclusion rate of ingredients. And I make, I made it, uh, inclusion rates as a fixed reference. Okay, now I am in lysine level. Lysine has standard deviation, right? So again, some product of lysine level of ingredients multiplied by inclusion rate of each ingredient plus normalized value times square root or SQRT of sum of that nutrients modifier. What was the nutrient? Lysine. So I'm gonna choose modifier numbers of lysine. And two parentheses. Yeah. And now I'm going to calculate it for methionine. Again, some product of methionine levels in ingredients, comma, inclusion rates of ingredients plus normalized value times SQRT 
of some of methionine it should be from here actually there we go methionine modifiers I'm just gonna double check for this one. Yes, correct. Okay, I'm gonna do same thing for methionine plus cysteine. So I'm gonna choose methionine plus cysteine levels of ingredients times by inclusion rate of ingredients, close parentheses, plus our normalized value times SQRT or square root of some of the methionine plus cysteine modifiers. It means that this row, row 32 and two parentheses so two left theronin for theronin i would put again some product of theronin levels in my ingredients times by inclusion rate plus the normalized value times SQRT of sum of theronin modifiers in my ingredients. Double parentheses. Okay. The last one is for tryptophan. Some product of tryptophan level times by inclusion rate of each ingredient plus normalize the value times SQRT of sum of tryptophan modifiers, right? There we go. So now we finished diet specification. I'm just gonna format it as this one maybe and I do not need this column so I just attached 
V column to the others. Okay. See, this is the diet specification for the stochastic method, right? That's enough. Now we can go and set up the solver function dial box to formulate our diet. But because I would like to solidify the difference of a least cost fit formulation and stochastic fit formulation in your mind, that's why I'm gonna make another column to calculate diet specification based on least cost fit formulation. It is just to show the difference between stochastic column and least cost column. We won't use that column that I'm going to create now because we are not formulating the diet based on least cost fit formulation, but I would like to have that values over there just to compare with our stochastic values. And then we can understand it better. We can understand the concept of stochastic fit formulation in depth. It is the key. If you want to master any skill, you need to understand it in depth and you need to apply it in practical situation. Okay. So I'm gonna put a column uh, blank here. I'm leaving a column blank here and I'm writing LCF. LCF, let's write it, least cost feed formulation, or for now, I'm just gonna write formula. I don't want to make it longer. Okay, so in fact, it is the formula will be same as the diet specification for those nutrient, for those ingredients uh, or for those nutrients without standard deviation. It means that I'm going to write just this formula for diet specification. Some product of ingredients nutrient times ingredients inclusion rate, just that. It is for least cost fit formulation. So, it means that it is some product of, for example, here is cost, cost of each ingredient times inclusion rate of them, right? So, I am going to put my cursor on B27 and press a four key. And I'm doing same thing for S27 just to make them as fixed values to not allow them change in other cells. And I'm just going to drag it down until here, and then I can delete extra cells. So this one is extra energy protein for SDs. I need to delete because we do not need diet specification for SDs. All right. So 
This is just to show, this is just to compare our stochastic method with uh, LCF method. We won't use this. Okay, now that we have completed our spreadsheet, let's take a look at that. Now I am going to set up the solver dialog box. I just selected data and then solver function. Okay, what is the objective cell? This is our objective cell, V3, the dietary cost. We want to minimize dietary cost. So by changing variable cells, what are the variable cells? In fact, variable cells are the inclusion rates of ingredients. So B27 to S27, the final formula, the final inclusion rates of each ingredient in our diet. Now I'm going to uh, set up the constraints. If you watched my previous videos, you saw that we need to add constraint for ingredients. So for inclusion rates, see, I'm just selecting these cells, reference cells from B27 to S27 should be less than or equal to the maximum level, right? The maximum levels that I have put together here. It means that I am telling the software to formulate the diet in such a way to have my inclusion rates equal or less than the maximum values. I'm going to add the next constraint. So the next constraint is again for inclusion rates of ingredients. This time I am selecting greater or equal than or equal to uh, minimum values, right? This row. It means that the inclusion rate of ingredients should be greater or equal to the minimum values that I have specified in row 24. So let's take a look here. Now we can add, as you can see, we have added the constraints for ingredients, right? Now we need to add constraints for diet specification to say, okay, what will be my dietary protein? dietary amino acids, dietary energy. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going just to zoom in, okay, to make it more visible for you. I'm gonna select solver again, and I'm gonna add constraint. This time I'm going to add a constraint for weight, for dietary weight. It should be, it is this cell, it should be equal to one because I want my diet to be formulated or to be balanced in 100%. 
The next one is for energy level. So I am selecting the cell of energy level in V column. It should be less than or equal to the maximum level of energy that I have specified in column U. I'm going to add one more constraint for energy. It should be greater than or equal to minimum value of energy. And then I'm going to add constraint for protein. So this cell V7 should be greater or equal to this cell, the minimum value of protein. For calcium, I can select calcium, phosphor, sodium, and chlor, and also lysine. See, I have selected all of these cells. They should be greater than or equal to the minimum values that I have specified here. I can see the phosphorus cell is empty. I must have forgotten the phosphorus uh, requirement and I will import it later on. Add, okay, methionine should be greater than or equal to this. Add the next one. Methionine plus cysteine should be greater than or equal to this one. And for ronin, same thing. And for tryptophan, we have same thing. Okay. I'm going to close this. I believe the phosphorus level for rover phase should be 0 0.48 or something like that. Let's have a look. Yeah, 0 0.43. 0 0.48 is for starter, but for rover is 0 0.43. And I have imported that as well. Okay, now if I go back to the solver function dial box, it's been completed. And you need to make sure that from select a solving method, you need to select GRG nonlinear because, in fact, stochastic fit formulation is a nonlinear method. Then I'm going to choose options. And from here, I need to check the box for ignore integer constraints. And for integer optimality percent, it should be three. Maximum time should be 100 seconds. Iterations should be 100 times. Iterations means how many times the software is going to repeat the optimization to come up with the last or with the best solution for diet formulation. And then I'm going to choose GRG nonlinear, and I need to 
check this box, require bounds on variables. And derivatives should be forward. And these guys are good. Okay. Now, let's take a look at our confidence level. Our confidence level is 69%. If you want to calculate or to balance your diet based on the least cost feed formulation, your confidence will be 50%. I mentioned that already. So if I put 50% here, look at the normalized value. Normalized value is zero. It means that it won't affect our diet specifications where I have imported the value of normalized value. I'm going to change it back to 69%. And then I'm going to formulate the diet. I'm going to select solver function and press solve. Okay, solver found the solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. And I'm going to press okay and accept this. Now, our diet is here, and you can see the final formula in inclusion rate row. I'm just double checking the values and they are fine. Okay. Now let's take a look at the dietary cost. Our dietary cost is 45 cents. With 69% confidence in our uh, diet formulation. If I change it to 50% and then try to solve it again, You can see that our dietary cost went down. It decreased because we are lowering the confidence level. This shows that if you want to have higher confidence in your diet formulation by implementing stochastic fit formulation method, you need to pay for that you need to pay an extra money for an extra confidence level. But consider that if you have a diet with higher confidence level of providing nutrient requirements of the animal, for sure the performance of your animal could be growth performance, reproductive performance, whatever, will go up and will pay off. It will pay off the extra cost that you put on your diet. 
and then you can decide which confidence level is the most economical uh, confidence level for your diet formulation. See, now diet cost is 44%, 44 cents. I am going to change it back to 69% and solve it again. And as we saw, dietary cost is going up and now is 45 cents. One cent ex more expensive because of 19% increase in confidence level because you are taking standard deviation or variability of nutrients into consideration in your diet formulation. Let's say I'm going to have 80% confidence level. That's fantastic. It might increase the level of probability of um, meeting the nutrient requirements of animal and it might increase the performance and for sure it will increase your revenue. I'm going to solve it again to see what will happen. Solver found the solution and we can see our dietary cost went up just a little bit. And I would choose this confidence level, 80%, uh, because it doesn't have any significant difference with 69% of uh, confidence level. So this was all for today that I wanted to say. As I showed in my previous videos, I'm just gonna make a final formula in a vertical position. So I'm going to just copy and paste the ingredients names here, but I'm going to transpose them. It means that instead of having them as a horizontal position, I would like to have them as vertical position. So here, corn level, it is equal to inclusion rate of corn. For wheat level, it is equal to this one. With wheat middlings, soybean oil, canola, soybean meal, fish meal, oyster, limestone, decalcium phosphate, lysine, D-methionine, sodium bicarbonate, dried whey, serotonin, salt, vitamin premix, and mineral premix. So this is our final 
for mu naught here. So this is our the final view of a stochastic fit formulation spreadsheet. I hope you have understood this concept and you will use it in your practical situation. If you have any question, just let me know in the comments area. And if you have any feedback for the further videos, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to make tutorial videos for you and explain them in intuitive language. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are and enjoy your day.